Oh, hi. Margaret Dwyer here in the beautiful Fern Gardens at Marsh Billings Rockefeller National Historic Park in Woodstock, Vermont. I'm just searching for the perfect specimen because I'm about to do a watercolor demonstration of three different kinds of ferns. And I hope you will watch or join along. Um, the Fern Gardens are have a lot of significance for the park. Elizabeth Billings, it was her uh, labor of love to cultivate and um, document all the ferns. There's a fern named after her, the Miss Billings Fern. And there are dozens of species here, so you have so much to look at and work from here. So go out in your yard and grab a fern, and I'll meet you at the painting table. Hi, I'm Margaret Dwyer here at Marsh Billings Rockefeller National Historic Park in the ever beautiful Woodstock, Vermont. Uh, we've been focusing on ferns today. We are surrounded by dozens of species of ferns in the park. Um, so many of them here and then more cultivated by expert Elizabeth Billings um, when their family lived in the mansion here. I have gotten a few different species here. This is a hay scented fern, which is extremely delicate. Um, the pinnas are very far apart. Uh, the, there's a lot of detail. Um, whereas this one is the, um, sorry, I've got two cameras going on. This one is the sensitive fern. And I've always liked this fern a lot uh, because it's, it's just got a cool shape. It's a little more hardy looking, uh, a little less fussy. And it's very sensitive. And the next one is the Christmas fern, which is awesome. It's such a beautiful shape. It feels plastic compared to the rest of these really supple ferns. And um, a fun fact about the Christmas fern is that it stays green like this all year round. That's why it's so hardy. Um, and it was made for, uh, used to make really great Christmas wreaths, wreaths, which I can see how that would work well. So um, I'm not sure which one I want to do. I might be able to do more than one, but I think I'm going to start with the sensitive fern because <clears throat> its feelings will get hurt if it doesn't get to go first. So here's my palette. This is just like a nice little white um, muffin pan. It's plastic. It's made for exactly this. It's got nice wide wells. And I've got quinacridone gold. I've got a couple of different greens here, hooker's green, thalo green, and a crimson color to neutralize the greens and make them look more natural. They're loosened up a little bit. And I'm not going to draw. Um, I love to do some of these simple exercises with just brushwork. I'm gonna start with swiping a little bit of that gold and I'm dragging and dropping it into another well and I'm adding a little bit of the hooker screen and now I've got a really nice light yellow natural green. Got a little bit of water on my paper. Okay. So I'm going to start with sort of a middle green and save my uh, my lights and my darks for the end. I'm gonna start right up here and I'm gonna create a spine and then I'm gonna pull these in from the top toward the center. I'm gonna hold my brush back far using a pretty big brush. And I'm gonna just give it some weight down the middle, I'm bouncing my brush a little bit, you can see that it is tapered like that quite a bit. Now before this dries, I want to get in here and pull out, pull in I should say, some of these beautiful, beautiful shapes here. Now the reason I'm trying to get some of this in here before it dries is because I don't want that to be an edge. So you gotta work kind of fast. You notice I'm working from kind of the inside to the edges. I'm not outlining it. 
This one looks a little thin. So I'm going to go back. Nice color of green, though. I think I hit that color pretty good. These are so graceful. So nice and quiet here. Now, I haven't changed brush sizes. Really don't need to. I'm working with a pretty good size brush. This is a, a size 14. Notice that brush <clears throat> bouncing. That's, that's what it wants to do. You don't want to hold it down here because then you're all fingers and you don't get that cool bounce action. You can probably hear the wildlife in the background because it's so quiet. I'm going to do one more set here and then I'm going to um, add some other color into this. I broke this stem off because I thought it would be too long. Um, but now I wish I'd kept it because I need to do that. Now, this is drying pretty quickly. So some of this is uh, still wet, some of it's beginning to dry. But this is just one color of green. And so when you really look at it, you see more than one color. Um, certainly there's one that's darker. So to mix up the darker green, I'm going to use that same mix that I just did, but I'm going to add some hooker's green to it. It's going to make it darker, but it's not a real earthy green. And in order to get it um, to be more natural looking, I've got to add a little bit of red. That is the color complement of green, and so it's going to neutralize it. And this is going to be a much more natural green. And I'm just going to touch some of the edges. So it looks a little dark. I'm going to add a little water. Better. As you can see, it's starting to kind of bend a little bit, take on some form. Greens are, uh, you know, arguably the, the hardest color um, for artists of all levels to mix. There's so many different ones and their subtleties are uh, important. So my goal in adding this deeper green is not to cover up that first coat, but just to um, kind of accent it, highlight it. It's starting to get drier down here, I can tell. So these nice blurry marks might end up being um, a little crisper. We'll see.
This is when you really want to let the paint do most of the work. You see how really unfussy this is? Um, just capturing the feeling of it, not overthinking it. That's pretty good for now. I think you could probably, as it dries, uh, go in and add even a few more uh, glints of dark. Um, but it's good to live with it. Let it dry, look at it again, and you can always uh, rework it. You can even re-wet it if you need to. If you need to lift, in other words, bring out a highlight, you actually clean your brush out with water it's the only time when you really press on the brush and lifting paint off, lifting out a highlight. Here I'll paint with water and then lift. And you can see it's no longer flat looking. So that is the first fern. Uh, let me reposition my paper and I will try another one. All right. Now we're going to move on to the hay scented fern. And this is the one that is um, very delicate and has a lot more detail. Um, depending on how much detail you want to get, I guess it's up to you. Um, I'm just kind of quickly doing nature studies. So I'll try to get a little fancy, but not overthink it. Um, I'm gonna use, this is a much yellower green. So I'm gonna start with that quinacridone gold again and add a little green to it, but this is gonna start out much more yellow looking. And what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna give myself the stem as a guide for this one. And this one is kind of curling and dying a little bit in some of the uh, smaller pinnas at the top. Now these ones are very far apart too. So you could almost give yourself these small little stems And then I think I would do small pieces like that. I think I might bridge to a smaller brush because it is quite a bit finer. You don't want to go down to too small of a brush though because you, uh, you want to be able to carry a lot of paint on your paintbrush without having to re-dip. And it's just getting warmer and warmer as I'm sitting here. So this is going to be drying really quickly. Kind of fun to do though. Now the way I dropped in color, another different green into this first one I did, I won't have time to go all the way down and then come back up and do that. So I might do that a little bit as I go. Now here's where it gets tedious if you want. If you love detail, go into each one of these, or at least a few, and give it just that tiniest little detail that describes the pinules. just gives it that extra little something, but it's time consuming. So I'm only gonna do a few like this. We'll be here all day. Another green, make it kind of interesting. Then we're gonna go back to that nice, really light yellow, the 
the yellow green. Now these really, these seem to stick out straight out, not on an angle. It's funny <clears throat> what you notice when you look closer. They can barely just touch the paper to get that nice crisp little mark. And do you notice how I don't have to go back to my paint well? Because I've got plenty of paint on this brush. It's very meditative, very details oriented. I'm going to do a couple more of that, and then I'm going to do, um, just try that Christmas fern, I think. It would be great to document all these ferns um, the way that um, Elizabeth Billings did, but just do a grand watercolor journal of all of them. very uh, kind of exotic or tropical at first until you put in those neat little marks, tiny detail, go nice and fast. Notice I'm still holding my brush back really far. Okay, I'm not going to go all the way down right now. I think you see where I'm going with this. I'm just going to add a couple of darks. And again, the reason I'm doing that is so it doesn't look flat. Okay, so now we're gonna finish off with their third fern, the Christmas fern, um, which is really amazing. It's got a deeper, uh, a deeper, more neutral green to it, and the pinnules are a lot more sawtooth shape and uh, not quite as spiky as the hay scented fern. So a couple of ways to do this. These are very close together. So I suppose you could paint the stem first to give you a guide. I guess that's the right thing to do. A sweet beautiful shape. Now these these shoot out more on an angle not so straight out on an angle. So I'm going to capture a few of these. They have a really interesting way they grow um, kind of alternately. It's beautiful. And then before these dry, I'm going to try to bring out a little of that sawtooth feeling on the edge. I'm doing it a little bigger than uh, life because I actually want you to be able to see it. Okay. 
and then the other side as well. I'm going with a, I'm starting with a darker green this time, not so much a yellowy green, and I'm going to be getting even darker. And in this case, I painted kind of half at a time. I'm going to do a few more of these, and then I'm going to drop in a darker, deeper color. I always feel like I'm rushing a little bit when I'm doing these videos because I don't want you to be bored. should pay attention here because I seem to be wanting to bring mine out a little further. They taper, but not quite as much as I'm doing it. So I'm going to pull myself back a little bit and start <clears throat> observing a little more closely. While this is wet, I'm going to take my phthalo green, which is a really deep um, deep dark green, but again, you've got to neutralize it, otherwise it looks uh, very artificial. And so I've added some hooker's green to it and some alizarin crimson. It's going to look a little dark at first. Oh, but it works so nicely. Like some of these are curling and that's kind of a neat effect too to get some of that profile So I'm moving right along here and I'm getting less and less fussy as I'm going down here because I feel like these are all bending and twisting and so I'm trying to kind of give you that illusion a little bit. This one seemed to go fast. I wonder how many more weeks till Christmas. This color. This is a great green. I'm going to try to taper off a little bit. Notice how I'm using the, the, the whole body of the brush. I'm not outlining and filling in. I'm using the, the, the brush to make the shapes that I want. I'm painting with the brush, not drawing with the brush. Okay, I'm going to smack a few darks in here. And 
And then I'm gonna add a little water here and there and lift a couple of highlights out. My paint is damp. If it was dry, I'd still be able to do it, but it would take a little more work. And I think I'm about done with this one. That didn't take very long. See how it dries quite a bit lighter, so you might want to just go over and hit it a little bit with some glaze, meaning uh, more paint. So go grab some ferns and try this at home, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.